So Google advertising, the last of our three Google lectures. We shall cover uh, advertising operations today and eventually application program interfaces and Google supporting database systems. Now, you might think of Google as a search engine or a set of cloud-based applications like G Suite, maybe even a pioneer in self-driving cars. And yeah, it does all that stuff. But more than anything else, Google is the world's biggest advertising operation. It had $162 billion in revenue for 2019, with around 90% or more of that being from online ads. And the crazy thing, it doesn't even create the ads. Okay. However, for the first time, Google's ad revenue in the United States actually dropped. Globally, it went up, but it went down in the U.S. I got a, I got a link for that. So it may be tapering off. Google will see a 5% drop in U.S. advertising revenue this year. First dip since uh, it's been tracked. That's kind of crazy. On the other hand, Facebook and Amazon, they're still growing, but the firm, uh, but they're happening at a slower rate. So everything's kind of slowing down a little bit, but in particular, Google's getting hit by ads. Why? Uh, it's, it's ad revenue is getting hit because so many businesses are having trouble because all those businesses that are built around foot traffic, right? The idea that professionals are downtown working, stuff like that, all that's kind of gone away. So the guys, they don't even have business. They don't have the money to advertise. And even if they did advertise, it wouldn't do any good because people just aren't out and about. So that's what's really hurting Google. Okay. Now, Google's basic model for uh, ads draws users in to use the search engine by having excellent quality search results. Then it's going to select ads that align well with the search terms. It's going to show those ads along with the search results. And when users click on the ads, then Google gets paid, right? That's, that's the core model. Now, key questions, number one, identifying which ads are going to be aligned with which terms. Number two, prioritizing ad placement, so which ads go where. And then number three, setting the right price for clicks, right? So what's a fair price for a click on an ad? Ah, interesting stuff. Well, first thing, there's two parts. Suppose Google has a page where it can display ads. Could be Google itself, could be Google search results, could be YouTube, right, which is closely affiliated with Google. Oh, it's under the alphabet umbrella. Could be some third party page that's agreed to run Google's ads. Right, whatever. So, how does Google decide? Well, there's two parts. Number one, Google looks at the likelihood of clicks, right? Because clicks mean money. All else equal, an ad that gets clicked more will pay Google more. So those are the ads Google wants to show. Okay, all else equal. There's a little bit more to it than that. Second thing though, Google looks at how much the advertiser will pay per click, all right? So essentially Google wants to maximize not the number of clicks and not the amount per click, but instead the product of clicks times dollars per click, right? Equals dollars, right? Clicks times dollars per click equals dollars. That's what Google wants to wants to measure, wants, wants to maximize rather, okay? How does it do that? Well, for this part, it has something called a quality score. Basically, goodness of ad and the site. Uh, so I'll say the site that the ad links to. Okay, so however good the site is, 
however good the advertiser is that uh, people are clicking on the ad, whatever, all that bundles into what's called a quality score. And Google is basically using that as an estimate for how many clicks the ad is going to get and whether it's from a legitimate business, stuff like that. Then there's something called the bid. Advertisers can bid to have their ads appear with search terms or other, you know, types of page content. And that's it. Basically expressed as the price per click paid by the advertiser. Okay, so what this means, advertisers, their ads get assessed a quality score that Google thinks, oh, is this a good ad or a not so good ad? Then advertisers can bid. They can bid high or they can bid low. Google's gonna look at that combination of things. Google will show the ads in the best location. Uh, Google will show in the best location, the ads that have the best composite quality score and bid. Okay, thus maximizing revenue. That's what they want to do. Pretty simple. Okay. So that's the that's the basic process there. Wow. Quality score includes a whole bunch of things. So number one, the baseline is the relevance to search terms. For example, if your ad is described as being one about, I don't know, Chicago Bears gear, and somebody does a search for Chicago Bears, it's pretty obvious that you know your ad is pretty relevant to that search. On the other hand, if your ad is about Chicago Bears and the search is for, say, Philadelphia Eagles, it's gonna be less relevant, right? They're both gonna be football, a different team. So again, not quite not quite the same thing for that ad. Anyway, so and then of course it's possible to have things that are completely unrelated. If I have Chicago Bears and the search is for say, you know, instant coffee, there's basically no relation there. So that's one thing, but that's just the baseline relevance because you can have many ads about Chicago Bears stuff. So how does Google determine which of those, given that based on relevance, they're all about the same? Well, second thing how often users click on the ad. So Google simply tracks, hey, this ad gets a lot of clicks, this one doesn't get many, all else equal, it's gonna show the one that gets more clicks. But following up on that, if the site has made this data available to Google, Google can also track how often that ad leads to a purchase. Because the idea is Google wants to keep the advertisers happy. So if ads are provi providing a lot of web traffic, but not much in terms of sales, well, guess what? The advertiser sooner or later is going to get tired of paying for those clicks and they're going to stop. So Google says, you know what? We're going to go easy on that one. Instead, we're maybe going to consider ones that are more likely to lead to a purchase. Because if an, if traffic on ads frequently causes purchases, the advertiser is going to ha be happy, possibly improve its bids, right? So in one case, lots of clicks, but no purchases. There's going to be a downtrend there. Google wants to stay ahead of that. On the other hand, some clicks, but a lot of purchases, the advertiser is going to be happy. There's going to be an uptrend on what they'll be willing to pay. Now, of course, in many cases, these factors are closely correlated, right? If the search, if the ad is relevant to the search terms, that's great. Uh, that will probably all else equal lead to more clicks on the ad. And of course, the users who do click on the ads are probably more interested. So a high click-through rate does tend to be fairly well correlated with purchases, but you know, it's not nothing like a perfect correlation. But yeah, they do tend to point in the same direction. Now, of course, Google wants to show ads that are likely to lead to long re long-term revenue. So all else equal, high quality score ads have display priority. Advertisers can bid for a better positioning. But remember, because this is a multiplier, right? If you want to reach, say, some target X, right, that's, uh, required to have your ad be in the best position, have your ad be at the top, okay? If one formula is, let's say, let's say X is 100, and however these things are measured, okay, one ad, ad one, 
has number of clicks and amount per click. If say ad one has a, uh, I don't know, a click through rate of five CTR times $20, okay? But the other one has a much higher click through rate. Ad two has, let's make that a little lower, right? They have to bid $1 higher. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this one has a 10 click through rate times they only have a $10 bid, right? Well, if this guy adds $1, plus $1 for add one only gives it a 105, right? Five times 21, but plus $1 for add two gives it a 110, all right? So what I'm saying is, if your ad has a higher quality score, and we're just calling that the click-through rate for this simple example, you don't have to pay as much as a weaker ad to get your ad to the top of the stack. Okay. Now, Google has two basic ad models, uh, and those reflect the two categories of sites that Google places the ads on. First of all, its own site or subsidiaries or close partners. So Google, sure, but also YouTube and other close partners. The other one is third-party sites, uh, not closely affiliated with Google, but they've agreed to run ads selected by Google. Uh, so for purposes going forward in the lecture, I'm gonna go with the easy example. The easy example to talk about this first one is just Google itself. The second one is easy to talk about bloggers, right? They don't have any close affiliation with Google, but Google says, yeah, okay, we'll run ads on your site. Now, this uh, split is shows up in the two ad models. So AdWords is for ads that get shown on Google sites. AdSense is for ones that gets shown on third-party sites. And again, just, just to remind everyone, Google's search results itself, the search results are pure. They can't be bought by advertisers. So advertisers can pay to have their ads bumped up higher in the listings, but they can't pay to have their actual website bumped up higher in the regular search listings. So, for example, between Pizza Hut and Domino's, right, their websites will get listed in regular search listings according to how often users, you know, click on those search results primarily. Okay, if one gets clicked on more than the other, that's gonna be out, it's gonna outrank the other. And if one gets more clicks, it will rank higher and be displayed above the other, okay? Nothing else to be done about that except redesigning the site, perhaps. Just something called search engine optimization or SEO. Sure, you could do that, but you can't just, can't pay Google to be listed higher because search results are pure. Not so for ads, right? Either Pizza Hut or Domino's could offer Google more to get their ads displayed in a better location, okay? That's how that works. So again, we're just talking about ads. We're not talking about ordinary search results. Okay, so basic AdWords model. So in AdWords, advertisers pay for ad placement with associated search terms or groups of terms, and it's affected by the search term relevance. So for any ad that you create, you'll put in some tags about uh, what the ad is about, and the other thing is the bids. So for any set of search terms that you'd like your ad to be shown with, you can bid on those search terms. And basically, uh, the bidding starts at a quarter per click, and you can bid more to have a better chance of appearing near the top. Now. Over the last 20 years, AdWords has been around for almost 20 years. When it first started out, it was really easy to pick a set of terms and still make money off of it because there weren't that many businesses using AdWords. But, you know, over time, 
A lot more businesses are crowding in. There's only one space at the top for any given set of search terms. So if there are more businesses participating, that's gonna put upward pressure on price, right? Basically space at the top is a scarce resource. If there are more businesses chasing it, the price is gonna go up. Uh, also, Google's provided uh, software as a service called Google Analytics. That's basically a way that businesses can see what they're getting for their ads. Uh, the idea is with web analytics software, you can see all the actions that people do on your website, but businesses are primarily interested with if they run ads, how effective are those ads in bringing in paying customers? So consequences over time, number one, in order to get more value out of AdWords, a lot of businesses have redesigned their site to improve relevance and bump up their quality score. And they're also, of course, paying a lot more attention to advertising effectiveness. So if businesses are running their ads along with a set of search terms and it looks like they're not getting any clicks or not making money off of the ads because they're paying too much for the clicks for the traffic they're getting, then yeah, they're gonna revise that choice. They're gonna maybe stop advertising with that set of terms. All right. So a little bit of history on that. Uh, it actually originated in 2000 outside of Google, so 20 years ago. I'm not saying Google stole it. However, there were idea ownership intellectual property lawsuits that were settled out of court and Google paid some money. So you can probably infer that they maybe did something wrong. Uh, they weren't, wasn't the only business like it at the time. There were a lot of others. Most of those did not survive the numbers. Bust. And uh, similar business models currently operated by Bing, right? Bing has its Bing ads. And Yahoo used to have an independent one, but now it's under the Bing umbrella. So right now, uh, AdWords is Google's main revenue source, around 75% around of uh, Google's revenue, although it's a little harder to get the, that exact data than it used to be. Uh, basically, it's a virtuous cycle that they're in. Because Google has high ad quality, by which I mean the ads Google shows get a relatively high number of clicks, then Google brings in high revenues, right? So if it's getting more money per ad that it shows, that's great. Google can bring in more money to reinvest in systems to further improve the ad performance. Uh, also, AdWords is extensible. It's a framework uh, that is designed to respond positively to growth in the internet. So back in 2000, sure, a lot of people had the internet, but it was a lot less busy in a sense than it is now, especially in terms of e-commerce. But now, you know, nobody thinks twice about buying stuff online. It's a very common thing. So Google knew if they set, for example, a fixed price on what ads were going to cost, they'd be behind the curve because growth in the internet is always going to push up demand for the scarce resource of prime advertising positions. So part of why they uh, included this advertiser bidding model is they wanted to let the prices float up naturally in accordance with demand. It didn't make sense for them to set up a flat rate. So of course, Google wants to maximize total revenue from its ad selling ad space, right? And essentially, in order to do that, uh, they'd like to charge more unit, uh, more per unit of ad space. And they do that in part by the bidding mechanism. But they also want to prioritize ads that are more likely to lead to sales, for which Google can expect to ultimately charge higher rates, right? Even if they're not paying higher rates right now, if the advertisers are happy because the clicks are leading to a lot of purchases, yeah, over time, their willingness to bid will generally go up. Other stuff, uh, Google doesn't want to let its prices get suboptimally locked in, right? It doesn't want to set and freeze uh, an artificially low price. So it lets advertisers bid against each other in its bid model. Another thing, this has gone back and forth over the years. Uh, there have been some times when Google picked the words, picked the uh, search terms for the ads, and sometimes when it let advertisers pick them themselves. Right now, uh, this advertisers picking the terms themselves has been pretty stable for a while. So it says, Google says, one thing we don't have to worry about is selecting the ad, selecting the ads to be shown. They don't have to select which ter search terms are relevant for a given ad. They let the advertisers do that by their own bidding. And of course, they want to fill up the available ad space, right? That doesn't mean that Google has to pack absolutely every page with ads. Because if there's an ad, if there's a page out there where it's just not cost effective for to display the search results, right? They'd rather just deliver the information quickly for the search results. Yeah, they won't do that. And last, again, taking advantage of the expanding online domain. So Google wants to set up a system where its revenues will float upward as usage of the internet goes up, and that's all built into the competitive bidding model. 
So a quick diagram here of how it all works. Google has a database of advertisements. Google also has a database of search terms. Anytime a page gets loaded up with Google's uh, search results, the ad allocator will figure out, ah, here are the search terms. I'm gonna pull a set of ads that match well with these search terms, and I'm gonna display them, right, according to the bids and uh, quality scores. I'm gonna display them in some of the good places at the top and some of the less good places at the bottom. Anytime a viewer clicks on the ad, Google will update its allocation data, right? It'll say, ah, here's an ad that has been clicked on a lot, right? It's gonna bump up the uh, information on that, say this one has a higher click-through rate than it used to. And of course, the advertisers send some money to Google. Well, that's AdWords. Now there is a case, uh, Blue Creek Cabins. Not sure, maybe I haven't posted this on Blackboard yet, but I will certainly post it today. Uh, basically the story with Blue Creek Cabins, I'll do a quick walkthrough on that. We'd come back and uh, talk about it if you like. So, circa 2003 is when it started. And then, let's say 2010. And then, okay. So it went through the, uh, basically the boom and bust in a sense of using AdWords. So it happened at first, 2003, okay. Blue Creek Cabins was a business right up here. Blue Creek Cabins was a small business around renting cabins in rural Georgia right, the state, not the country. And they started using AdWords in 2003. So the story of it, basically the, the plot says, at first, the AdWords platform wasn't crowded. So most terms the business picked did well enough, okay? Basically brought in more business than they cost. So that's great, so the user was happy. Over time, this uh, business expanded its use of AdWords, but many other businesses also joined the platform. Okay, so what happens then? By 2010, Blue Creek Cabin feels or learns that in many cases, it's not getting its money's worth for what it's paying Google, right? Partly because of bad term selection but also because uh, a grown business has different needs, right? Basically the, the issue here, new business needs ads to fill its, right? To get customers in the first place an established business needs ads to fill uh, any spaces not taken by repeat traffic, right? Repeat customers or word of mouth. Okay, so as the as the operation got bigger, it didn't need Google quite so, quite so much. Right? Because again, it already had a fair amount of repeat customers, had a fair amount of word of mouth business. Maybe that was filling up 80% of its cabins. It's not quite as desperate to fill in the rest. However, the other thing, because the field is so crowded, a lot of businesses are using AdWords and the price is going up. So by 2011, switch to search engine optimization, right? Basically, redesigning the site to appear higher in ordinary search results, still using AdWords, but 
much more limited, okay, and not paying nearly as much, only where, you know, dollars are getting made. So that's the idea. And uh, I don't think I probably haven't uploaded the article. Let me do a quick check on here, see if uh, I have it on the lecture site. So otherwise, I'll upload it. And you guys, I will encourage you to read it over the weekend to get a little idea of what it's all about. Unless it's in extras. They should just be the lectures. Yeah, let's go back to extras. No, nothing there yet. Okay. So I'll have to put in that later. That's fine. Okay. Well, this is it. This is a good break point. We'll come back next week. We'll start talking about AdSense, which is the other one, right? AdWords is for Google search results. AdSense is for other sites. So this is a good break point. Any questions on any of this stuff? Hey, we got something. What's happening? When is the test? Well, let's see. Believe it's next Thursday. No, it's a little after that. Let me check the slides. I believe it's, uh, you know, let me stop this.